Hello everybody, my name is Jeffrey Allen Ford and I want to thank you for allowing me the privilege of speaking with you here today. I belong to 16 different high IQ societies including Mensa. I was featured on the cover of the July 2016 Mensa World Journal and I've been in the United States Mensa Bulletin. I also belong to the Triple Nine Society for people with IQs in the 99.9 percentile and above, minds above. And I also am a member of the World Genius Directory, which is the who's who of the high IQ world. Last year in January, I was honored in Michigan's House of Representatives for winning the World Genius Directory Genius of the Year for America, which includes the North and South American continents. Today, I want to talk to you about raising your IQ and becoming more intelligent. A lot of experts say that we can't raise our IQ. I say nonsense. The only way that would be true is if you were born to the perfect parents and the perfect family and the perfect neighborhood, you went to the perfect schools that didn't care as much about indoctrination or telling you what to believe as what they cared about truly teaching you how to think and not just teaching you how to regurgitate facts back to the instructor. Okay, that's not education, that's indoctrination. And that's not what teaching should be. So, because we haven't all lived in the perfect environment, the perfect culture, the perfect society with the perfect family, we need to do things to help increase our intelligence, and we can do that. And it's not all that hard to do. As a matter of fact, it goes back to the fundamentals. You cannot build a, a building, a skyscraper, with a poor foundation. You have to have a strong foundation. And today I'm going to talk about the steps that you can take to really build up your IQ. They involve how to listen how to read, how to develop the mental syntax necessary in order to think more complex thoughts, and how to also create an environment for yourself where you're able to think at the highest level, and also we're going to talk about how you can improve your attention span. So, let's talk first about how to listen correctly. A lot of people they don't listen. Think about how many arguments you've had in your life with people that never would have been arguing with you if they had just actually listened to what you said. As a tutor, I, I tutored accounting, and the students who would argue, you know, they'd say, well, yeah, but what I thought the question was asking was, you have to accept that words mean what they mean. They have definitions, and definitions matter, okay? So you really need to listen to what is being conveyed to you. And there's steps that you can do to be a really good listener. One, don't just listen waiting to speak. Be active while you're listening, okay? Be active. Really, really just tune out the voices in your head that will distract you from what actually is being said. And another thing you can do while you're listening, ask a lot of questions. A lot of people are afraid to ask questions because they think it makes them look stupid or ignorant. There's no nothing wrong at all with looking ignorant. I'm so ignorant, you'd probably believe it, but you know, um, I'm incredibly ignorant. I don't know how to fly the space shuttle. I don't know how to do TV repair. I don't think I'd be too adept at plumbing. I, I think we're going to contact the experts. So when I talk to people who do know something, I like to ask them questions when I, when I don't understand. And that helps me to learn more. And so when I leave them, I leave better and less ignorant than when I was before I met them. The other thing is to don't judge what people are saying while they're saying it to you. Um, just close that voice down inside your head because a lot of times people will be talking to you and you'll think that's nonsense so that's ridiculous don't judge so quick because a lot of times 
people need to get to the reasons why the things that they're saying is valid and think about all the times you've talked to people and they keep interrupting and keep interrupting they wouldn't they wouldn't need to interrupt you off they just shut up and listen to what you have to say right and then they'd understand what you're saying but by the constant interruptions whether on their part or you interrupting them in your head even if you're not saying anything out loud you're gonna miss it so try to suspend your judgment and just really listen. The other thing I do is I take notes. If I'm in a meeting, if I'm at the doctor's office, uh, notes can be a real lifesaver in the doctor's office because then you don't have to rely on your own memory, right? Because you have a record of what was said and you have it documented too, which can sometimes come in handy later. Now let's talk about how to learn to read intelligently, okay? You're not going to get far in life if you don't know how to read intelligently. I'm not talking about do you know how to read. I'm talking about do you know how to read intelligently, okay? And there's some tips I'm going to give you to help you read intelligently. Tip one, consider the source of everything you read, everything whether it's a book, a periodical, a document, wherever. Consider the source. Some of what I'm going to say is not going to be politically correct. You might not like it, but I hope that you'll consider it. I would like you to consider the age of the author when you read something. Were they born during the uh, Depression? Were they born during World War II? Were they a child during World War II? Could that possibly create a bias in their mind because of the era that they grew up? Did they grow up during Vietnam in the flower power era? You know, while when drugs are just being passed out, you know? Um, that can create a bias, too. Um, what era did they attend college in? These are things that you need to think. Where were they born? What part of the country? Were they born in a, a small town in Kansas? Were they born in New York City? Were they born in Los Angeles? Um, Chicago? All these things can create biases. Not necessarily, okay, but you have to be aware of potential biases while you're reading. What's the gender of the person who wrote it too? Could there be a bias due to someone being a male? Could there be a bias due to someone being a female? Not necessarily, but it's possible. And you need to be aware of that before you start reading something. Also, who published the material? That really matters. Is it a large publishing company, a small publishing company? Was it self-published? Was it something ooh, that you read off the internet? And then you definitely want to consider the source if it's not footnoted. Um, you need to think about that. And also think about the date of what you're reading too. Okay, when was it published? Was it published recently? Is it more recent? Is it fresher? Or was it published long ago? Long ago can also be really good because maybe it was written with people who were in that era, who maybe knew the people. Okay, there, it, it might be more authentic. So they, dates don't necessarily, like if it's older, negate the usefulness. It might actually make it more useful in ways at times. Now let's talk about attention spans. <laughs> People really, really, really don't have a very good attention span now, do they? Most people cannot stand to handle the 140 characters of a Twitter feed. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, they used all the characters. This is too much effort. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to have a really good attention span because you put things in working memory in order to work with. And the longer things can stay in your mind and that you can stay focused, the higher level thoughts that you can engage in. So here's the ways that you can increase your attention span. One, learn to be comfortable in your own company and in silence. Because a lot of people, they have a hard time focusing because they, they can't be still you know, and they need to be doing something. They miss the stimulation of their cell phone or the computer or 
the TV and all these things distract you from being able to really digest and to focus and to pay attention. Learn to be comfortable. And what you can do is you can create a nice environment for yourself and we'll talk about that later. Number two. Second tip for increasing your attention span, and of course, this is not medical or psychological advice for people with ADD or ADHD. Okay, if that's your issue, consult a professional. This is for people who just need help getting improving what they're doing. But if you need more help, got it. There's no shame in that. There's this resource called Other People Who Are Incredibly Valuable, and I encourage you if you need the help to get it. Um, but have a special interest, okay? What I mean by that is a passion, something that you can focus on for an hour, two hours, three hours, and time, man, just flies by. You are so into it, so engaged, and that shows you that you can really focus, that you do have a good attention span. And the more you engage in your special interest, really being at one with it, the more that you'll be able to take that, hopefully, and apply it to other things. And maybe you want to incrementally shift that into other pursuits as well. But you know that you can do it at that point. It's then just a matter of applying it to other things. Now, we also all have things that we are naturally, you know, better at than other things. So don't beat yourself up if that's the case. That's a human condition, okay? Just really, really, really try to focus on the things that you can really excel at and focus on and then take those skills and just improve gradually, incrementally, the other things. The other tip I have has to do with diet, sugar, and caffeine. Some people, they have sugar, they're bouncing all over the place, man, they're not sitting down, they're up, they're ready to go, boom, boom, boom. Other people have sugar, and it energizes them, and helps them to sit and really focus, because they have the energy in order to do that. Know your body. Some people with caffeine, they get jittery, edgy, they can't sit still, kind of like sugar, but different. Other people have caffeine, computer programmers, for example, are notorious, um, and that caffeine will help them to sit there for a long period of time and really get done what needs to get done. So know how different foods, and also turkey with tryptophan and, and other foods also that might slow you down. So be aware of what you're eating, and that can really help you with your attention span as well. Now I want to talk to you about developing the proper mental syntax that you need in order to absorb information and to really assimilate it and to create higher level thoughts. Just as you cannot build a building with a shaky foundation, you cannot create higher level thoughts without the proper mental syntax. Okay, how do you do that? You can do that with having really, really good grammar, okay? And there's a really fantastic new invention out there to help you have the grammar skills if you lack them that you might need. It's this thing called the internet. <laughs> they have amazing tutorials. Amazing. And they're terrific. And they're easy. And they're done at different levels, like really beginning up to higher level. I encourage you to take part in those tutorials they're free, except for the internet connection in your computer. Um, just really, really focus on that. And that will really help you develop the mental syntax you need for the building blocks or higher level thoughts. The other thing I want to encourage you with is vocabulary. Vocabulary is huge. We think with words. Some people think in pictures, but most of us, I believe, think in words, mostly. And the the more nuanced your vocabulary is, the more you can think very, very precise thoughts. For me, having a good vocabulary and building my vocabulary is a way of life. What I'd like you to do is dedicate yourself to improving your vocabulary and don't beat people up with it either. That, that's obnoxious, right? 
when you know people don't know the words that you're using, either don't use them or define them while you're using them with people, but at least have them, <coughs> excuse me, so that you can use them yourself in your head while you're thinking. Two other fantastic ways in order to uh, develop these, the, the syntax that you need to think, music and math. Math, I think it's pretty obvious. You have the building blocks, and it really, really, really helps you in terms of structuring, thinking in terms of systems and patterns. Music, the same exact thing. Music is, and when you combine all, all of those things, if you're good with a language, math, and music, you're really going to be set up. But let's say you don't, you're not really mathematically inclined. Well, then focus on the language and maybe you're really you know a lot of people who are really brilliant at math don't have the greatest language skills when i uh, worked in accounting i would meet people and it's like you wrote that memo they were number people and good for them because we need them too uh, so that's what you want to do with that and the other thing I want to talk to you about, the final thing I want to talk to you about, is creating a strong intellectual environment for you to live in. That is so key. Have a place in your home that's quiet, that's still, where you feel at peace. And, that, and if it's not in your home, that's okay too, because sometimes people have large families and they need to go away. Maybe find a place outdoors or maybe in the library, somewhere where you can regularly go. And I encourage you to engage in daydreams. Daydreams are not a waste of time. They're actually, you know, the precursor of every invention, if you think about it. People dream things up that never existed before, and that comes in thought, and it comes in daydreams. Fantasy, right? You're, you're picturing that. So... Give yourself time to daydream. Give yourself time to create. Create an environment where if you want to write, you can write. If you want to draw pictures, you can draw pictures. If you want to build something, build something. But allow yourself to be able to do that. And have it be in a situation where there's not too much extraneous noise, where you can really be at one with your thoughts while you're doing it because that really helps you build up being used to hear your own voice. Because so many of us are told every day what to think. We're told by the media, um, academia, uh, our employers, uh, TV. We're told what we need to think. You need to be able to think for yourself if you're ever going to be thinking at a higher level, at a true genius level. The other thing I'd encourage you to do, join groups. Again, there's this resource called Other People. They know things that you don't know, and you know things that they don't know. Get together with them. Pool your intellectual resources, and it will help you all to grow and to become more intelligent and more knowledgeable. I had a friend named Chuck who one time said to me, if you know accounting, you know chemistry, and I go, what? And he goes, if you know accounting, you know chemistry. They're both systems. You've already proven that you can think in a systems framework. All you have to do is take that ability and apply it to different things. It completely opened up my consciousness. And I am golden. I mean, I've learned so many different things you would not believe since. I was also a very young man at the time. Um, but again, people change people. Allow them, to, the good ones, to change you for the better. The other thing is, can surround yourself with great books. Whatever your language is, whatever the people are who wrote in the proper syntax with really good grammar, people who you'd want to emulate intellectually or even emotionally, read those things. And it will help you because while you're reading good grammar, it helps you with your own grammar without you really even being aware of it. It just does. My favorite uh, fiction book is Pride and Prejudice. I love the language. Find something where you really, really love the language and delve right into it. 
The other thing, art and music. Go to museums. And in terms of music, I encourage you to listen to classical music. Listen to what you want. But a lot of music is not necessarily good for the mind. I think we all can be honest about that. But some music truly is. I really love Mozart. I love Beethoven, some, some Wagner, some Franz Liszt. I'm not a huge classical music fan, but I absolutely love Mozart and I love Beethoven. Especially Mozart, he's my favorite. Well, I want to thank you for listening to this and I hope that it helped. I know this might seem like very simple advice, but these changes, these building blocks add up over time. And they help to change you from where you were to who you can be. And these are the things that help to add life to life. Now, I, again, I thank you for allowing me the privilege of speaking with you today. And if you'd like to watch more videos by me, just subscribe to my YouTube station. Have a great day, and thank you very much. Bye.